Welcome to the link edition this week. In the midst of adversity, opportunities can continue to flow for those who are living. And we are here to make sure that happens. Tonight we're discussing again the African Free Continental Free Trade Area, ACFTA. We have discussed this here before for the manufacturers. And today we want to focus on SMEs. How can you benefit? And my guest is uh, somebody you have seen before. And uh, Mr. John Walugembe, who is the ED for the SME Federation of Uganda. John, you're welcome. Thank you, Sam, for having me here again. Let me say welcome again. <laughs> Thank you. So it's a pleasure to be here. All right. To discuss issues that affect the ordinary Uganda. Absolutely. Yes. So African free continental area, trade mm -hmm. area, people think, ah, what that, what's that animal? Just mm -hmm. break it down briefly for us. First of all, it's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. But the African continental free trade area was... Uh, has been a build-up, yeah. but it was agreed upon in 2012 that uh, we have a free trade area within Africa, mm. and an agreement was signed in Chigali on 21st March 2018. Now, for the viewers there who are not familiar, a free trade area is an area within which business people are free to sell their goods, tariff-free, tariff-free are mean taxes. Mm. So you, you are free to sell your goods to Nigeria, to whatever. Uh, wi without taxes being imposed on those products. Because ordinarily, yeah. countries impose some taxes mm. on in order to protect domestic industry for one reason or another. Yeah. But now we have decided as Africans that, you know what, let's trade amongst each other. Because, you know, Africa's inter, inter, um, intra-trade is yeah. very low. It's only 15%. This is compared to 67% in Europe. 48% in North America, 58% yeah. in Asia, and 20% in Latin America. So we trade more with outsiders than, than with ourselves. each other. Yeah. And what's interesting is, if you look at what we trade with outsiders, we are trading raw materials and minerals. If, if you look at what we trade with each other, we tend to trade more value-added products mm. within ourselves. Mm. So it's more advantageous for us to trade amongst each other than w with outsiders. So that's the idea of the African continental free trade area. And well, we think that by Africans trading with each other, yeah. it will lead to improved s uh, food security. It will lead to increased industrialization because SMEs will be encouraged to start adding value to whatever they produce. Right. It will lead to improved infrastructure. As you know, we have poor infrastructure. Mm. They, it's not easy to get from Uganda to West Africa, except if you go through Europe sometimes. Mm. And the cost of air tickets in Africa is too much. And then some countries are asking for visas and so on. Mm. So these are things that need to be resolved. And I think the African continental free trade area is a great opportunity All right. for Africa. Let's yeah. translate it practically. For Ugandan SME, what are the mm. real opportunities in terms of products mm. or even services? Mm. Okay, so firstly, Uganda has strength in agro-processing. Okay. Even without doing complicated research, mm. that's an area in which we are strong in. We've built our capacity. You see in the region, we yeah. are competing very well in the dairy sector. Mm. We are competing very well in the maize sector. We are competing very well in certain services. If mm. you look at tourism, and if you look at uh, edu education services, yeah. we are doing very well. So there are areas of strength which a country strategy, and as a country, we need to come up with an AFCFTA strategy mm. to guide, to say, SMEs, these are, these are the areas where we are strong in, let's compete. But already, if you look at the documents that we have, yeah. Uganda has what we call 10 priority crops, where we think we can do well. And those include vegetables and fruits, mm. it includes maize, it, it includes other things, and also includes four strategic commodities, okay. like cocoa, like palm oil, and others. So that should be the focus for every SME let's prioritize adding value to agricultural products okay. and let's also prioritize certain services where we've been able to grow our expertise and competence over time i'm told that in places like zambia mm. um ugandans are, are doing things there yes yes just give us a picture to, to uh, people may be wondering mm, really give us okay so, picture. so mm. the other issue that i need to explain with regard to Wow. Because every time people think about exports, they think that you, you have to just take a product. Something. Yes. Mm. No, you can go and start a farm in DRC. There yeah. are Ugandans who have farms. Someone was telling me the other day that he, he didn't even buy his farm. He yeah. just went to DRC and said, this is my place because people were not valuing the land and then started engaging in agriculture. Mm. So you can engage in what they call cross-border supply. You stay here and you supply across the border. Mm. The other time is cross-border consumption. The way students come and consume products from 
here. Mm. Then you can have what they call a commercial presence. You you go and put a commercial presence, like, you know, Africana yeah. has a branch in Zambia. Yes. Our mechanics are there in Zambia. Even traders, you know the main market in uh, Zambia, mm. you may find that half of the traders are Ugandans. Yeah. Yes. You know, teachers, Ugandan yeah. teachers are excellent. Now with DRC joining the ESC, yeah. Ugandan teachers can already go to DRC to take advantage of those opportunities. So we shouldn't look at exports as you staying S here. And solid things. Uh, you can go and provide the service there. Or you can stay and you, you interest people to come and, mm. uh, and t take the service from here. So there are those four modes of delivery of services that people should be okay. very careful about. So th th those, are especially the service sector, although the negotiations there are still ongoing, mm. but we think, yes, we have advantages in terms of agricultural validation to yeah. products, yeah. but also the service sector, especially certain value chains are extremely important for okay. us. Okay, so if I'm interested in, say, a country like uh, Malawi, Yes. What do I do? Do I visit? Uh -huh. So first of all, as an SME, you need to be export ready. Mm. Export ready means what are you taking? Mm. Do the people the other side need it? And that's what we call about market intelligence. The yes. Federation now has been implementing an export readiness program with the support of UNDP. Mm. And part of what we've done under these SMEs for trade initiative yeah. is to conduct a study to identify hey, what are the constraints that SMEs are facing. Mm. And one of the constraints that SMEs face is lack of information. You don't yeah, know information what Information is need. critical, yeah. You don't know who the buyer is. You don't know what their tests are. Mm. Can I tell you that in Togo they eat leather? Yeah. Or when you look at leather, you look at it for shoes. For them, they eat it. Yeah. Yes, they are happy to eat it. But you know after you slaughter the cow, you throw the leather. Mm. You see? So why don't you go and find out what their tests are? The milk in Ghana is not necessarily our milk, mm. but our milk is better. But they're used to their milk. But if you introduce our milk, they might be interested. Mm. Many people in West Africa do not know that Uganda is a net coffee exporter, and they don't know that our coffee is one of the best on the continent. Mm. So the issue of market intelligence and market information is critical. The issue of you being ready as an exporter is ready. And when you're talking about readiness, I want to remind us about the so-called four Ps. Mm -hmm. Do you have the product? Because you cannot sell air. Mm. Do, are, are you pricing it correctly? Mm. You may have a good product, but the price is too high. Mm. Are you promoting it? Well, do you have a good place? Because, okay, you want to sell coffee, but where can people find the, the what? The coffee in, in a place like uh, Namibia? Mm. Maybe, do you have an outlet? So those five Ps, as we know them, are extremely important. Mm. As you prepare to go into and take advantage of. So if I want to get ready, John, mm. I've had you, what, what do I do? Start by appreciating the export process. Okay. Because you don't just wake up with a product and go. Mm. Some products you need what they call certificates of origin. Because certificates of origin are the passport for the product. Okay. Because under this, we have what they call the rules of origin. Mm. If 55 countries agree that we trade amongst each other, the other, c before you bring your product, the other country must confirm that this product originates from Uganda and the certificate of origin mm. is very important. So familiarize yourself with the requirements. And the Federation of SMEs is running an export readiness program. Okay. Uh, yes, with UNDP, but you also have a passport to export program where we can support you to appreciate this. Mm. The Uganda Export Promotion Board is also doing the same, plus other associations. So familiarize yourself with the export requirements, with the import requirements. The other side, what do they want? Mm. Familiarize yourself with the market. What does the consumer want? Have a contact that you work with. Do I need to walk there? Do I need to fly to that country, for instance? Would that be, would that make sense? Does it hurt? Mm. It doesn't hurt. Mm. There are countries where you don't need to fly because there's a lot of information online exactly. that you can rely on. Mm. But sometimes it's important to just observe, see how people behave mm. and things of that sort. There's a limit to which secondary information can support you to make the right decision. Yeah, I agree. So I would advise you that if you've reached that point of export, take the trouble to visit. Go mm. as a tourist. I see the our friends from Europe, they come here, mm. do tours. They move around in shops, they buy products, they say pack for me. They are not just going to, some <laughs> you know, they are going to see what, what what does the consumer want and what's the price and things of that sort. Mm. So you also go with some money, try to visit what is on the shops, the other side, try to appreciate who the buyer is, yeah. what their tests are, before you can 
take the leap of faith. So my take, uh, as we conclude, John, mm. is that SCFTA is there. Mm. However, mm. it's not on a silver platter. No, 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 no. You have to do a lot of work. Government has signed the agreement. The governments have committed themselves. Yeah. Yes, they are still negotiating. I think 90% of the tariffs will be removed yeah. incrementally over a 10 and 13 year period, depending yeah. on whether you are an LDC or not. But you as an SM, you also need to get ready. Don't just wait. Hey, gov to lead the government. Mm. Government to yambe. No. What can you do to ensure that you are export ready? Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, John. And uh, viewers, uh, the Federation of SMEs, uh, John is the ED, is doing that to help you to start. But it's not by assumption. It's by real work, by real information, by real action. That is when you get off the ground. BMK Delayed has footprint in S Southern Africa. It's because he dared try and he had the information and succeeded. You can try too, but it's going to require hard work. That was the link. Thank you for joining us tonight.